Welcome to Comedy Centric, your place for all things comedy. Every week, we'll discuss the legends and the people who built the business, the performers, writers, behind the scenes, and stories that you have never heard. So relax, take a load off, and join us for this episode of Comedy Centric. Now, the host of your show, nationally headlining comedian, a woman with a wicked sense of humor and a killer Jersey accent, Julia Scotty. Oh, thank you so much. How do you live up to an introduction like that? I'll tell you how. There's only one person that could be in the second chair with me, and she is the pride of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Lives in a tent whenever she possibly can. Ladies and gentlemen, my buddy, Kathy Caldwell. Yay! That was such a buildup. Thank you. I don't I know, live in well, a tent. Uh, I've only spent about a couple. But anyway, yeah. What do you mean? Jim's You've got called voice, me from Pittsburgh. It? Huh? I know. You, you've, you've called me from Pittsburgh in the middle of the night saying, guess where I am? And I went, where? And you go, I'm in a tent on a hill. <laughs> and, I said, and I'm not being I said, held about... captive. <laughs> no, but I worried about bears. I, I, I was worried that a bear was going to come in. And because uh, those There's sons of bitches between will kill black you. bears and brown bears. Black bears aren't really aggressive. And those are the ones that really are around the Pittsburgh area. And it's the black bears that are like up in Alaska that will kill you. Brown, kill uh, you. Or the brown bears up in Alaska will kill you. The black bears are, they just want to eat your sweets and skedaddle off. They don't want to kill you. Yeah, but if you've got the sweets and you don't want to give them up, a son of a bitch will kill you. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway, I, 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 let me move on because I, that's how I really was thinking about today. I was thinking I was going to go to Lourdes. You know where Lourdes is in France? What's Lourdes? Lourdes oh, is where France? people. Yeah, in France. It's where uh, people go with the supposedly the Virgin Mary appeared to Bernadette back in the 1900s. And uh, and she told uh, Bernadette three secrets, which I thought was kind of shitty. Why would you just tell some kid secrets? You can't tell kids. Anyway, but, but now people go to this grotto in Lourdes. They've been going there for years to get healed. It's got healing waters there. Okay. What so, kind of healing? Uh, mental or physical? Well, that's just it. You can go anything you got. It's like a it's like a buffet of of miracles. <laughs> People throw leave their crutches there and they walk away. Some some really, dance it works. afterwards. It works. Oh, I don't know. I. I I, I guess so. There are documented cases of people who, well, there are people who try to walk away without their crutches. And, and you want to go face. there because what is Well, alien? I've got, I, I figure it's the Catholic version of the genie. You're going to get one wish come true, right? <laughs> so what's, I got. What's I got, your wish? What do you want to wish? Well, that's just that I need, I need help to decide. I, I figure, all right, I got, have... if I. <laughs> Well, got enough wrong with me. Then you're I, actually asking for outside help for your. Well, I, you know, when you only get one wish. You want to make sure it's the one you want, right? So the, again, uh, do you need outside help for that? Shouldn't you just? I, well, you're know? my you're my bud. I, you know me probably better what than. What if I gave you just, wrong advice? Would it be like you know, Julia? You should ask for the right hip not to hurt. <laughs> Not well, the there's, but there's three things that I really think I'd like to get done. Um, All right, you, go for uh, it. Or the first <laughs> one is uh, what? Uh, <laughs> I, well, I I don't know if I should ask for a cure for my 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 terrible arthritis, which cripples. You should me. ask for a cure for uh, your ADHD, but go ahead. Well, okay. Uh, oh, remind me to tell you what I got today. Speaking well, of see? Was, uh, all right. Yeah. Exhibit A. Well, you brought it up. You, all right. You Go ahead. It. Anyway, all right. First, my second first wish. wish. First wish. No, first wish. First wish is what I want it? to be out of pain. Oh, well. I want to be out of pain. All right. Okay. So, well, well, the audience, those who know me only from the stage do not realize that I am constantly in agony on stage. That's how much I love these people. Okay. I would never tell yeah. you that, but I'm telling you They'll now. They'll probably erect a statue to you somewhere, but go on. Okay, <laughs> well, what's your second wish? I'm sorry you're in pain. I'm no. not dismissing That's you. That's all right. Second wish is uh, uh, I'd like to lose about 100 pounds. I'd be happy with that, I, you know, uh, which would go probably go a what long way to— What if you lost to... 100 pounds first, and maybe you'd be in less pain? 
Well, that's a theory. That's only a theory. I'm not going to, uh, you're probably right. You're probably okay. right. Well, you can't lose one, 100 pounds. It'd be like a, you, no, not oh, trust 100 me. pounds. All right. Okay. 80. I could lose 80 and you'd still go. Mm-hmm. You put on weight. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, you'll, then you'll have all the skin hanging. You got to. Uh, fat fills I could always face, get just so you know. I could get that sucked out. <laughs> I could get all right. Third wish. I could get it. Third, Third wish. wish. You know, I knew what I'm it was when we started this down. Like there's, there's actually gonna, you know, these are gonna happen. But go ahead. Third <laughs> well, wish. I knew what it was when we started this conversation, but now it's sort of slipped. It slipped away, as most things do in my head these days. Maybe a better memory would be my third one. I was going to say, How's that? <laughs> memory loss, go on. So anyway, yeah. Uh, well, uh, how, you, how are you doing? Look, you know what? I'm, I'm impressed because you uh, you didn't, you know, you didn't ask for anything like, oh, I want to be a millionaire or I want a oh. fancy car or I, I want a house on the beach. You, you, you have pretty reasonable expectations yeah, I mean, you know, being I know. Pain, I'm not in- losing weight and memory loss uh, yeah maybe a better not, nose uh, oh you have a good nose yeah <laughs> you have a nice nose not as nice good as good yours nose, you have Julia. A, you know oh, what no. I've oh, looked nose. longingly at your nose my nose is there are times when, <laughs> but when you know when you don't know I'm looking I will. I will steal a glance at your nose. Yeah, I have lusted after that. Can, can you see it's, it? But, but that's part of its charm. It's I took a, a softball. To I was catching, and I took a softball right to the nose, oh. and the umpire behind me, I turned around. I could see my cheek swelling immediately, and he goes, "Yeah." That's going to leave a mark. <laughs> were, you, were you catching? Pretty tr- yeah, I was catching were you a and catcher? the ball bounced. And I, I wasn't, I was, but I wasn't a very good, I mean, I didn't play sports growing up. This was like when I was in my 20s, 30s. And um, so, you know, they put the sucky people at catcher and right field. And so I was the catcher and the ball bounced right in front of me. Bam, right in the nose. And boy, I have to find a picture. I had a black eye. People were walking around for weeks. People were like, look at me like I was a, a, a battered woman. And, a, and some guy actually goes, I hope you kicked the guy's ass who did that. <laughs> but that pain, that I've, I've been hitting the oh. nose. That pain is like, it's like a lightning, like somebody hooked your nose up to an electrical outlet, which I've done, by the way. And it feels exactly the same. I don't believe you. I think you're being silly. Okay. Okay. So we'll, well, we haven't talked about the show yet tonight. Uh, tonight, I can't yeah. even say tonight because we don't know when people are listening to this, and if it's if it's six o'clock well, it's in the morning. It's tonight for us right now. But you know, but we don't want them to know when we do this. Uh, today's show. Why, why don't we, we just call it that? Today's show. Okay. We'll talk about today's show. Um, so we're comedy centric, which means we talk about all things what? Centric? No. Mm. no. <laughs> comedy. Oh. oh, sorry. And that includes, you know, uh, there's comedy and music. There's comedy. So we're going to be, you know, we're not just talking about comics. We're talking about comedic actors or music. Uh, uh, so over the over the next. You know, I'm hoping we're on for the next 20, 30 years. So we've got a lot of shows coming up. But tonight's show. I'm hoping we're, we're alive be, for the next 20 or 30 years. Well, uh, there'll be somebody. To, there'll always be somebody to follow us. Uh, this will become an institution Airs. like like the Tonight Show. It'll be uh, some new yeah, host Or the Colbert on. Show. Or, well, the, the yeah, Daily maybe. Show. Was it? The yeah. Daily Show. So uh, anyway. so we have we have Tommy Moore on tonight. Uh who is uh, who's, well, why don't you talk? Tell, tell the people what, who Tommy is. Tommy is a historian of comedy. Um, probably, I, I'd be hard pressed to find anybody that knows more about the comedy legends and their stories. And um, he's really, I think he's, he has a book, it's called The, well, I know he's the professor of fun. 
but he's written four books and maybe he has a he's got four but i think he's got another one coming out too fifth yeah book coming out. but what what a uh, what a mind and what a uh, you know he's like a, a walking um rolodex of information as as, as it comes so, to uh, yeah. comedians and we would be hard pressed to pick one comedian that to talk to him about so what we did you and i were so clever aren't we? this is we're so clever uh we picked three mm -hmm. but they all have what what in their name red red that's right red the three reds and the first one being so we got uh so in in terms of a uh, chronological order, who's the oldest? Is it Red Skelton? Uh, I would, it would be toss up between Red Skelton. Skelton. They're all pretty much in the same. I think okay. Red Skelton so would be the oldest, though. Red Skelton, Red Buttons, and Red Fox. That's right. And, That's right. Uh, totally different, all three of them. And, but very funny you know, in their own in their oh own way. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Uh, and it, this is why I love this show because just doing the research for it. I mean, obviously you don't know everything. Tommy does, but we don't. And so you know, you try to learn a little bit about what the subject matter, and just doing the research on those three. Wow, what what amazing talents! And Red Skelton was, um, uh, I think he was my grandfather's favorite comedian. He all. Uh, loved red, red, red skeleton and he was the clean one right yeah he was kind of a clown he was a comedian for all ages uh you know you could be a five-year-old kid and still laugh at red skeleton yeah so and then uh, red buttons he was the one who did a lot of roast red buttons did a lot of the uh dean martin roast but he had i mean he was also yeah. an accomplished actor oscar and he was 1958 also, uh, yeah uh oscar winner yeah um, See, those I, two guys I, were like actors, right? Who? Red Skelton? Uh, Red Skelton and Red Buttons. They, they were both they actors, comedians acting. first, though. But they were first, But Red Skelton was in a couple of movies, and uh, uh, so was Red Buttons, the Academy Award winner. And the third, and then we got to go, is Red Fox. And tell us a little bit about him. I find Red Fox fascinating. Again, I had no idea. Uh, one of the one of the amazing things is he was good good buds. They grew up and worked together. Um, uh, he he was friends with Malcolm X before Malcolm X was Malcolm X. Um, they worked at a place together in their teens called Jimmy's Chicken Shack, and in Chicago, and uh, they started doing petty crimes together. Uh, stealing suits and selling them on the streets and um, I think selling pot stuff like that and so Malcolm X wanted to kind of up the ante and kind of get more into more, military, more nefarious right? things and yeah. yeah and just more nefarious things like I think he wanted to start doing harder crimes <laughs> and Red Fox is like yeah I'm gonna peel off and go do stand-up comedy and tell dick jokes and so Malcolm X went to prison for 12 years, and that's where he really developed Malcolm X and learned about civil rights and educated himself and became Malcolm X. And then Red Fox went on to become Red Fox. And then, but years later, I think they they hooked up again. And I, I believe Red Fox was very, uh, still very much, um, a lot, not a line, but he, he very much had a, a soft spot in his heart. He was involved in the civil rights movement a lot. So, but we'll talk all, we'll talk, we'll try, hopefully get all that with Tommy. But we got to, we got to cut out of here for a break. We got to go, we got, it's our first break of our first show. So we'll be back. Do we get we'll be cake back in like, Go get us some. Why don't we do that now? You go, go get cake too and come back to us in whatever we come back. Thank you. Everybody, Julia, oh, what's tragedy. wrong? What's wrong uh, with you? Oh, I was, I was hoping we'd have Tommy Moore. We could see him, Tommy Moore, but we can't hook oh. up with him. I think this. Uh, what oh. happened, folks? Uh, the satellite that we were going to get Tommy on uh, suddenly 
dropped out of orbit. I don't. We don't know how it happened. Um, I but blame it, it's, the Russians. Uh, I think it was the Russians. Can right now, if you look over the the western sky, and you can see a fireball. Tesla. Know. You should blame Tesla too. But Tesla. no, Tommy Moore. So welcome back, everybody, and thank you for being part of Comedy Centricators, our first show. And uh, so far, we're off to a roaring start. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we've only had uh, a little technical difficulty nine times, and so we're in good shape. But uh, So we're no, changing uh, the name of the show so, to Cluster F. Yes, Correct. which is not going to get past the FCC at all, but we're going to give it a, give it a, give it a shot. So, uh, But no, so Jim Corhan, our fearless leader at this whole thing, he has been working diligently with Tommy to try to get him on, and we, we've we not been able to get his... Uh, so anyway, Tommy Moore. Tell me more. Here's yeah. the problem. Here's the problem. I am currently in North Carolina, okay? Oh, my our God, that mode is of a problem. Yeah, our mode of communication here is carrier pigeon. Sometimes the pigeons are slow. That's the whole problem, you know? I was trying to get a Dixie cup and a string, but they don't carry that in North Carolina. As a matter of fact, North Carolina's motto is, at least we're not South Carolina. Okay? Well, yeah, but you should be able to get a Dixie cup. After all, you're in Dixie. You know what? You would think. Actually get out of my head. <laughs> oh, you all right, Tom. You would Welcome think. to the show. Ed, Ed we're, uh, we're so glad to have you. Uh, if anybody's not Thank familiar you. with Tommy, my goodness, uh, you, man, you've kicked around a lot. You are really, you're the professor of fun, correct? I've been doing this for 49 years. I've been a comic That's for 49 years. Yeah. He started yeah. Out, he started out as, a, as an associate professor, actually an adjunct professor, and then went up to associate <laughs> A community we, no, the whole reason yeah. the professor thing even happened was because from, you know, I'm a Philly guy, and Temple University yeah. in Philadelphia called me and asked me if I could do a course in comedy. So for five years, I taught at Temple University the history of American humor, how to do stand-up comedy, comedy writing, and uh, so I became the professor of fun. Well, you, as I've always had fun with you, so you lived up to your name. So let's let's get right down to it. We were talking when I spoke to you. You know, we I wanted to sort of bring up the fact that you brought it up really that the that comedians have changed because they they always tend to reflect their culture. And you wanted to you had three examples that you're gonna you're gonna focus on with. This. Yeah, you know, you asked me to talk about. Uh, the people whose shoulders we stood on, uh, the old giants. And the thing is, the old comedians were entertainers. A lot of the new young comedians today are commentators. That's a whole different art. But the old comedians were entertainers. They were only interested in making people laugh. They didn't care about insights, observations, values, relevance, nothing. Just make people laugh. So I said, you know, three of the best people to use are the Reds, Red Skelton, Red Fox, and Red Buttons. And, you know, I wrote three books. I'm on my fourth book now about comedians because, you know, in 49 years of doing this, I've either worked with, worked for, worked around every comedian there is. I had my own comedy club for years. I booked a million comedy shows. And, uh, Somebody said, you better write down all your memories before you forget them because I'm old and forgetfulness happens. You know, I mean, I'm old. What can I tell you? I, I, I pee Morse code. OK, it's like dash dot 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 dash dot. I think it's help. I think I'm saying help. OK. <laughs> and I said, let me write these books before I forget, because forgetfulness happens. Last week, I forgot the Alamo. OK, there were three stages of forgetfulness. First, you forget faces. Then you forget to unzip. Then you forget to zip up. So before I get to well, that point, uh... let me write these books. And so we're talking about so, the red. There's red skeleton, red fox. So, yeah, right. The three red reds, button. right, Tommy? Yeah. 
with red yeah, skeleton, yeah, yeah. red fox, and red buttons. Let's start with red skeleton because uh, I think his his okay. career probably red goes skeleton back. Always furthest. introduced himself as one of America's clowns, and he really was a clown. The interesting thing is his father who died when he was very, very young, was a clown at the Hagen Beck and Wallace Circus. And Red's mother said, I knew it would come out in one of my kids, and it came out in Red. And Red just got the show biz bug, and he was a clown. I mean, he started out for a little bit in burlesque and then vaudeville. He emceed dance marathons. Uh, he was on showboats. And he wound up having one of the top ten shows for years. And the reason he was mostly a clown is because he would open the show with jokes as a stand-up, and he would close the show with pantomime. But in the middle, he did clownish characters. He had uh, Freddy the Freeloader and Sheriff Deadeye and Carol Flower McPug and George Appleby. And the funny thing is he did a very clean show and a very clean act. Uh, so... That's it what I. That's what I saw, show. Tommy. When I, yeah, when I was watching his clips, he he was so clean, and I couldn't believe like how you know he was able to continue that. It, everything was very very clean. Well, he 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 tried to gear his show to an audience that grandmothers and grandchildren could watch. However, however. The rehearsals were very different. Everybody in the building would come down to see the rehearsals because they called it the Red Skelton Dirty Hour. Because Red <laughs> would throw in every nasty ad lib he could think of, and it was hilarious, and it would drive the director crazy. But then when it came time for TV, he was church clean. And you could see that, is, too. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, I no, just want no. to say, you, I used to watch it. Uh, I think it was Tuesday nights on CBS that he was on it. That's when I yeah. watched it. And uh, uh, I loved watching him. Uh, and and you're right. You could see that little bit of a naughty uh, look in his eye when he'd get it. And, and you know, he's, it's, he never actually said the dirty joke, but it was, you could read between the lines, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And a couple of interesting things about um like I said, he started on the vaudeville. He told me this story when I interviewed him. Great story. You've got to be a comedian to really appreciate the angst involved in this story. Uh, it was like one of his first weeks ever in vaudeville. And he honestly wasn't that good. He knew he wasn't that good, but he was trying out. And he went on stage, afternoon show, and the manager said, I hear you do pantomime. Uh, I suggest you do a lot of pantomime and not so many jokes. Okay. He went out, he's just some jokes, no response. He went right into the pantomime, a little bit of laughter. His act was over, no applause. He came off. The manager said, get back out there and take a bow. He said, but wait, I didn't get back out there. He went out, took a bow, no applause. He comes back in, and I says, get out there again, take a bow. He said, they're not a play. Get back out there. He goes back out, no applause. Third time he comes in, the manager says, get back out there. He said, look, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to tell me I'm no good. You're trying to embarrass me. Uh, you don't have to pay me. Just don't embarrass me. He said, get back out there. I'm going to turn the house lights on. Look at what's happening. He went back out, turned the lights on. The entire audience was Asian, and they were standing up, and they were bowing. They were giving him the highest compliment he could have gotten. So he told me, never worry about what happens. Just do your act, do your best, and you never know it may turn out to be great. We've all had a show like that where we thought we, we quite frankly sucked, you know, because we weren't getting the response that we, you know, we're normal, we're used to. And then you come off, and after the show, people are coming up to you and telling you you're the greatest thing since, you know, French toast. So you're right. Absolutely. You, never do. You, know, you, you give you 100% always. Absolutely. Do you so, ever, were you, you know, ever in uh, the bathroom that, when other people were talking, like, about the act? <laughs> like, like, hey. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that was a Milton Berle story, and I'll tell that some other day. But first, we got to clear it with the censors, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, but, all right. Yeah, yeah. So we have yeah, yeah. Red Skelton, yeah, uh, 
pretty clean guy. And the, uh, the, and he did another have a thing lot about of Rush Gump, and, and the one the one thing I want to tell any of you viewers, especially if they're young comics and they're new and they don't know who Red Skelton is or Red Fox or Red Buttons, you got the greatest tool in the world. You got YouTube. Go on YouTube. Yeah. There are some Red Skelton concerts. Uh, there are Funny Faces concerts. You can see him do an hour all by himself. And the interesting thing is, he worked into his eighties. And everybody thought he had baggy pants because he was a baggy pants comic. No, he had baggy pants because for the last 20 years, he wore leg braces. But it didn't stop him. He stood on stage for two two hours plus. Explain, well, well, we, Tommy, explain the, the, the uh, term baggy pants comics because a lot of people don't know what they are. Okay, in burlesque, you tried to look as funny as you could. So you wore a clownish kind of costume with baggy pants, maybe a big tie, maybe a goofy hat. And that made you look funny as well as sound funny. And every trick in the book, one of the tricks is look funny. Um, Woody Allen once said that was the brilliance of the Marx Brothers. They looked funny. They sounded funny. They walked funny. They talk funny, and that was before they even got to a punchline. But then you have a comic like Red Fox. Who right. Okay. Now, actually, <laughs> Red from Fox that. started that way. Is that right? Red Fox, star- Red Fox started that way. Red Fox uh, was half of the comedy team with Slappy White, and he would wear a loud checkered suit and a hat with a turned-up brim, and he worked what he told me was called the Tobus Circuit. T-O-B-A meant Theater Owners and Booker's Association. However, he told me what it really meant was tough on black asses because it was all the black theaters in the South and in the North, and they didn't get paid much, and they were stranded on the road a lot. But when you love show business, you do it. Uh, I asked just for the comedy one. today, nothing's changed. Nothing changed. <laughs> right. no. I asked Red Fox once, what's the best advice he could give to a comedian? He said, always work a place that has food, at least you'll eat, because it's very hard to be funny when you're hungry. <laughs> that's the per comic. That's what, that was always the thing. Uh, if somebody included food, we were there. You know. No, that's we right. Know Red, you know, gotta, we, and we know Red Fox for Sanford and Son. I mean, that was probably right. his biggest. Everybody knows Red right? Fox is Sanford, but most of the people right. in the sixties knew Red Fox as the king of the party albums. Let me right. explain what party albums are, in case you don't know. Party albums are called party albums for two reasons. Number one, people would buy them uh, before there was the internet and even before there was much comedy on TV, and they would play these comedy records at their parties. The other reason they were called party albums is because most of them were not recorded in a theater or in a nightclub. They were recorded at a private party with 50 people sitting in a room laughing. And the party albums were usually X-rated, but X-rated for then was like R-rated now. It was like clean dirty. It was naughty. Uh, And Red Fox was the king of those because he did over 40 party albums. And I have them all. But the the thing is, they weren't dirty, dirty. Here's an example of what was dirty then. He would come out in his opening, he would say, my name is Red Fox. He said, uh, in Russian, that's Zora Rojo. In French, that's Renault Rouge. In Chinese, that's Chai Chesame. And in Russian, it's Ursovich Yusanovich. <laughs> now, that was considered dirty back then okay and people would laugh you know oh he said something almost dirty. they couldn't even sell those records in the counters they would sell them under the counter you had to go into a record store know what you wanted to buy and say excuse me uh, do you have any red fox albums Mm -hmm. and the guy would say okay i'll I'll sell you one but don't tell him you bought it here it's like and there were several there were several women that had those too the the, the women uh, party albums too oh were, sure Rusty know. Warren and Bell Bar right. and Pearl Williams right. absolutely and the same mm-hmm. thing happened there you know um, 
But as society changed, uh, the last few albums he made were legitimate <laughs> X-rated albums. I mean, double X, triple yeah. X were all the words. But he was funny. And that's the difference between him and a lot of the comedians today who just use uh, the expletives to accent their passion. He used them in a funny way. And, uh, you know, uh, interestingly, the way he got on TV, of all people, uh, Hugh Downs from the Today Show saw him and said, you're terrific. I'd love to put you on the Today Show, but can you be funny clean? And he said, yeah, all I got to do is do every 30-second joke from my act. So I'll do every 30-second <laughs> joke, and uh, maybe the 33rd once in a while, but I can be clean. And they put him on, and he was clean, and he caught on, and everybody in the country wanted him now. He would work all these nightclubs where the people maybe didn't know him, and he would be clean, and he would do great. But then he, wor- he walked into New York City, and uh, New Yorkers are hip. They all had his albums. They all wanted dirty. They expected dirty. And when he came on and he was clean, he wasn't doing really well. And Steve Lawrence, of Steve Lawrence and Eddie Gourmet, was in the audience. And he yelled out, Red, do what you do. Mm-hmm. And so Red then started doing dirty, and he tore the roof off the place. Wow. And they loved it. But just to go show the other end of the story, he was working in Las Vegas the first time, okay? And he said uh, the big dirty word right in the front of his act. And the nightclub manager came up to him and said, I don't want you to say that in front of your act. So he didn't. He said it in the middle of his act. And the manager got mad, (laughs) and he brought him to the head of the casino. And there was going to be this really important meeting. And uh, head of the casino said to the uh, entertainment manager, well, what's the problem? He said, well, uh, Mr. Fox is using language that uh, I don't approve of in my nightclub. And the head of the casino said, well, let me ask you two questions. First of all, did the people laugh? Yes. Second, did anybody walk out and ask for their money back? No. He said, in that case, Mr. Fox, we're sorry for the inconvenience. Enjoy your stay. Have a great show. Thank you. And, and what year was that? That show business. Uh, probably early to mid-70s. Wow. Yeah. Oh, really? That late? Wow. That's that's a surprise. Yeah, yeah. So, and the one d- thing, Tommy. The one thing. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, go no, ahead. No, what no, I, I, the one thing that I didn't know, and I was doing a little bit of background about Red Fox, was uh, do you know the connection that he had with Malcolm X? Oh, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when he opened up his own club, um, he wanted to put a lot of photographs of Malcolm X and uh, a lot of other civil rights activists up. And then he said, eh, maybe that's not conducive to comedy so he decided not to do that but yeah yeah he was very very aware of the whole civil rights movement and yeah and he always helped everybody here's what i there was a there was a black there was a black comic in philadelphia named dab sugar willie and Mm -hmm. he was from northeast philly he really wasn't getting anywhere red fox saw him and he said i'm taking you under my wing and he brought him everywhere as a matter of fact i saw their show once. The show, now this takes a lot of guts for a comedian to do. The show was Slappy White, an old friend, Pat Morita, who was Asian, uh, and later became uh, one of the stars of uh, the Karate Kid. And Mr. Miyagi. Alan Drake, who was white. I'm sorry? Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, he was Mr. Miyagi. I could tell you a story about him, but we'll be here for hours. Um <laughs> He had Alan Drake, who was white, and Dab Sugar Willie, who was black. And somebody once said to him, well, you put everybody in your show, a white guy, an Asian, uh, black guy. He said, color doesn't matter because when there's a nuclear war, we're all going to be black. (laughs) (laughs) 
And, yeah. they, and they said, you know, aren't you worried about, you know, following four other comedians? And he said, no, people can never laugh enough. And he was strong enough that he could follow anybody. Anybody. Good butt. Could he follow I, Red right, Button? I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the quick right. Pat Morita story. Okay. I'll tell you the quick Pat Morita story. Uh, Pat Morita went to him once and said, Red, uh, uh, we have kids now. I, I, I have to move out of my apartment. Uh, I don't have enough money to buy a house. Could you lend me uh, $20,000? I swear I'll pay it back. I'll, I'll work it off. I'll do whatever needs to be done. And he said, here's a check for 20000 There is no working off. There is no paying back. Here's what I want you to do. When you make it, and I know you will, you write a check for $20,000 for somebody else who needs it. That's Red Fox. Yeah. Paying it forward is, is what we should do in, as comedians. Uh, you know, I, uh, if you can help another Absolutely. comic, if it's down. I, 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 you know, I've, I've been, I've been a beneficiary of that largesse when I was sick. Uh, my, my comedian friends. Well, you know what? I'm barely still. hearing it. Talk up a little bit. Okay, it's not important. Let's. <laughs> no, let's no, yes, move it on. is. Let's talk. Anything so, you no. <laughs> Oh, so Tommy, so we we were talking about the three reds. So we got through Red Fox, we got through Red Skelton, and our our final red is Red Buttons. And he was always one of my. If there's my one friends. word for Red Buttons, it is relentless. He just pounds oh. punchlines away over and over and over again. Again, get on YouTube. Look at look at Red Buttons on the Tonight Show. Look at Red Buttons yeah. on the Dean Martin roast. He just yeah, pounds he was, away. He was amazing on that. Yeah, and the Sinatra roast too. I mean, he was, he seemed to be like a roast master. He was very good at those things. Yeah, what he did was he took a very old format. There used to be an old format in comedy called "Remember the Words of." Okay, and it was like. Remember the words of Orville Wright, who said to Wilbur, we were only in the air 12 seconds. How could you lose my luggage? Okay? So he took lines like that, and he would say, remember the words of the Jolly Green Giant? There's nothing like a good pee. Never got a dinner. The Jolly Green Giant never got a dinner. Never got so a every dinner. <laughs> ro every roast dinner there was, he would come out and do 30 or 40 of those lines, bam, 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 never got a dinner, and it became his trademark. And mm -hmm. he was, a, he, and also he was a very warm, very nice guy. I met him when I was a little kid. We were on a show together. As a matter of fact, I think I have a picture of me with him around 1956. And if you look really closely in my face, <laughs> you'll see fear because he was holding <laughs> me up. He was holding me up over a six foot stage and I was dangling there. And I'm like, don't drop me. Please don't drop me. Don't drop me. Before Michael but Jackson did it, guy. Red Buttons did it. Red Buttons. Red Buttons did it. Yeah. No, I'm saying Michael and, Jackson uh, dangled the child off a balcony, but he had nothing on Red Buttons. Yeah. Wow. Right. Let me ask That's you. Right. Let me ask you a sec, uh, just one question. Um, the, you, yeah. you did start out very early, and I, I know you've talked about performing uh, in in Philly as a child. Uh, and your father yeah. was so so supportive of what you did uh, and your desire to be in show business. He was um, wonderful. You want to talk a little bit about that? Your your father. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my dad was an assistant manager in Vaudeville. And every night at the table, he would tell me stories about vaudeville comedians. And uh, that's how I got hooked. He bought us our first TV, and I was in front of it 18 hours a day. Uh, my father did everything to help advance my career. He, uh, he took my first professional pictures. He, uh, my mother made my first tuxedo. Uh, you know, everything to me was show business. There's an old line that Carl Walenda who was the great wire walker uh, in the circus set. And wire, uh, Carl Melinda said, on the wire, there is life. Everything else is just waiting. That's what it was like for me. To me, being on stage was life. Everything else was just waiting. And my father just couldn't have been more supportive. And God bless him. You know, if it wasn't for him and my mother, uh, 
I might be selling shoes somewhere. You well, know. I, I, so, I have a question. Uh, not, I, not, I, not, I like not shoes, problem. Tommy. Don't don't knock it. <laughs> I like shoes. So, so I, you know. Tommy, uh, the, having been introduced to so early in life Wait. to comedy, can you hear me? Uh, I, I really can't. Say it again. Something about early in life. I said, having been introduced to comedy so early in life by your father and being nurtured that way, growing, it was inevitable yeah. that you would grow up to be a comedian. But my question is, why did um, why did you not, I don't want to say progress because that's the wrong word, but when all the other contemporaries, your contemporaries were doing their brand of stand-up, you chose to stay in that, uh, that traditional uh, vein of comedy because that's what I love. That's what I love. Uh, to be honest, I did try to do contemporary stuff like a Robert Klein and a David Steinberg, and it was okay stuff. And I did it for about five years, and I was a decent middle act, but I wasn't having any fun. And I said to myself. You know, the root word of funny is fun. I should be having fun. Why am I not having fun? And I wasn't having fun because I wasn't really doing what I wanted to do. And so it took a lot of guts, but I pulled everything back and I said, now I'm going to do what I want to do on stage. And you really should do that as a comedian, no matter what it is, because the middle two words of comedy spell me. You have to be me. You have to be yourself on stage. So I went on stage. And I did a real old style type of comedy, one liners, street jokes, vaudeville mm -hmm. stuff. I contemporized it, but it was that basic style. And the very first time I did it, the audience went nuts because they never saw anything like that. And the next week, the phone was ringing off the wall, and I went from being a middle to being a headliner. And I never and, looked and back. That's an important point for any comic, really, is to be truthful to yourself. You have to live, you have to speak your truth up there, whether it's, you know, Absolutely. whether it's audio type humor, burlesque humor, or contemporary stuff. As long as it's honest and from your heart, uh, audiences will get. Don't you agree, Kath? You think? Oh, for sure. Uh, you have to get rid of all the stuff. Like, you can't go up thinking. You need to act like a stand-up comedian. You just have to speak from your heart and figure out a way to connect and tell your story and tell your, you know, it, to, to present your thing. It, you cannot in any way have that. So I, I really agree. And once you can shed that skin, it's the whole world is different. You know, mm -hmm. you, you're able to bring yep. everything in. And so. also, honestly, you've got to find your audience and they have to find you. I'll take you back to Red Buttons, and this might be the last story. But this is a true story that he told me. When he first started out, he would work anywhere, as we all did. As a matter of fact, the line was, uh, we're having a party, send over uh, two gallons of potato salad and Red Buttons. Okay? So <laughs> an agent called him and booked him for a luncheon. Now, at the time, he was doing a lot of Jewish humor, a dialect humor. He would do three Jewish jokes up front, and then he would do a song, a parody called Sam, You Made the Pants Too Long, and he yeah, did it uh, in a Jewish dialect. Well, he came out, and here was this group of guys having a luncheon, and he told his first Jewish joke, nothing. Told his second joke, nothing. He decided to forget the third joke. He went right into the Jewish dialect song. And he sang, pants are dragging, slowly bagging, hanging on the floor. All of a sudden, beer bottles are coming at him, smashing against the wall. He ducks behind the piano. He crawls off stage. He calls the agent and says, I'm sorry. I, I did my best stuff. They just didn't like me. And the agent said, Red, it's not your fault. It was the wrong venue for you. He had booked him at a Nazi Bund rally. Ooh. Show business. Oh my gosh. Show business. Yeah. All 
right, Tommy. So thank you. <laughs> uh, so uh, fourth book coming out. Is that right? Your fourth book is coming out, sir. Oh, you're, you're fading. You're fading. Oh, Tommy. You, you you do you have yeah. a fourth book coming out? You said yes. So uh, do yeah. do we have I a, name a fourth on it? book coming out? It's called the Tuxedo Comedians. It's profiles of 161 comedians from the glory days in nightclubs, where comedians wore tuxedos with cufflinks and patent leather shoes, and worked in clubs with crystal chandeliers and gold velvet drapes. And that's how I started. That's where I started. And uh, wow. I just love those guys. And I just said I have to pay tribute to them. So the fourth book is coming out, hopefully in the fall. And I'm already starting on a fifth book. So Cool. And well, how, can uh, we, uh, how can we connect with you for your other three books or to, to, if people want to find out more about you? The best way is my website, which is Prof Comedy, P-R-O-F-C-O-M-E-D-Y at excuse me profcomedy.com p-r-o-f-c-o-m-e-d-y dot com that'll tell you everything you need to know about me and more than you really want to know also the book <laughs> uh, if you just put in Tommy Moore Comedian uh, the books are all on Amazon and Kindle so you can get them okay. that way cool and we will be cool. sure to link all this in our Facebook yeah. page uh -huh. as well to make sure that you can you can find everything that we talked about here. So, Tommy, we can't thank you enough for your expertise. We hope you will come back with us. And, yeah. uh, oh, and I like love this. Because, I love it. Maybe we yeah. can figure out how to actually do this visually. See, well, we want to see your Well, you're going to have sure. to invest in a new computer that isn't steam-powered. Uh, you... There you go. There you go. Julie, All right. But I, I, I want to thank care. you God for... I want to thank you so much just uh, for doing this with us today. So it couldn't have, you know, it's a great way to kick off. So uh, take care. Look thank to you your for wife, calling too. me, my friend. We've known each other for 40 years almost. Yes, and yeah. uh, the first show we ever did together was you, me, and Mary Ellen Hooper at Rutgers <sighs> University in Camden. In Camden. I remember that show. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember that show. I didn't remember who was <laughs> on it, though. Camden, yeah. Right. I didn't even know Rutgers had a campus in Camden. And then I found out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. All right. Thank you, All Tommy. Right. Take care. Be Thanks, well. Tom. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. See you, gang. Bye-bye. All right. That was Tommy Moore, the professor yeah. of fun. Mm. Yeah, you should. I, I want to have, such... have a cool title like that. I want to be. What do you want, the professor? The maven of, of something, or you know, if I called you a professor in Italian, the Italian word for professor is professoressa, yeah. professoressa. That's like sexy, right? I like it. I see. Yes. Signora All professor right. Is. So what? we uh, we need to take a break. I was being Italian. And you always cut me off when I'm Italian. I know. I know. Well, you're always Italian, but uh, is that our music? Yes, it's our music. That's Jim. Is it Jim time? Is playing our. Well, it's time to roll out, out of this segment and then we'll roll back in and wrap up the show. We're going to play five questions with Julia. We're going to see oh, how smart she is. I can't wait. Is. All right. And uh, it's all going to be based on red. So come on back. It'll be fun. Comedy Centric. Uh, he's he uh, did the guitar and that's his song right he wrote or, the song it, he recorded it. Yes. this is from his album yeah. all right so Very we will uh, be sure to give paul props Marzano. and uh, Mar a m a r z a n o paul yep. like yep. as in paul marzano peter perry and paul 
is in poll. Uh, All right. So welcome back. Uh, thank you guys for being here. It's our inaugural show. It's our maiden voyage, and uh, we've had it. We've had a good first part of the show, and I'm excited about it. And Jim is making sure that we stay on track, so that is good. But we're going to go to uh, a little segment I like to call the lightning round. And this well, segment. Never... Okay. Shut up. There's no actual this lightning segment... involved, though, right? Uh, it, uh, you'll, we'll see. No, it's it's not even lightning. It's not always about being fast. It's about uh, I'm gonna see how smart Julie is, because she's really smart. I mean, you're like almost Jeopardy smart, but no, I'm know. like no. Je they not, were Jeopardy. Like, you have elementary like, school weird smartness. So yeah. So in honor of uh, our theme today, which was the three reds. Three reds. So we had red skeleton, red buttons, and red fox. So in honor of that, I thought I would ask you five questions, not three, five questions uh, that have red pertaining to them. So are you ready? Okay. Yeah. Are you nervous? <laughs> Why? Is there a trap door under my chair well, that I'm going to go? Maybe. We can find the out. Ocean. All right. So question number one. Who wrote Hunt for Red October? Tom Clancy. All right. Bing, 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 bing. That's very good. All right. Okay. All right. Question number two. Name one Cincinnati Reds baseball player ever. Johnny Bench. Bing, 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 bing. Very good, Julia. Question number three. Who wrote Little Red Riding Hood? Uh, I want to say Hans Christian Andersen? No. No. Was it Hans Christian Andersen? No. No. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Walt Disney? Uh, no. Jackie Cooper? It's a trick uh, question. It's kind of I like it kind of goes a back. Folklore to... tale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, you know what? I'm going to actually give that to you because it dates back to like 1697 and there's a lot of sketchy crap going on. So I don't know exactly. So I will well, give that plague. to you. I mean, you know, you know what the plague? Yeah, people were dying was, from the plague. You know, no, it think was 1697 write down? and it was called Charles Perrault. Perrault. So anyway. What? Okay. Wait a minute. Stop right. for a minute. Aside I'm a from... writing good. Wait a minute. Wait what? a minute. What? The plague was around. So nobody wrote down, you know, that was a popular story that people would tell you. They tell that story while, you know, people's limbs were falling off and stuff and boils were all over them. And they go, hey, did you hear the story of Little Red Riding Hood? Yeah, I did. Uh, who wrote that? No, they never said that. So, so you. Well, that's what I'm saying. Up. It's folklore. And so it dates back, like, even probably even before 1600s. Okay, go ahead. So the, you're absolutely right. It's folklore. That's the correct answer, Julia. You're, okay, you're so I, I'm damn three genius. For three. You're three for three. All right. Question number four. You ready? Uh, aside from red, name the colors in the rainbow. Red, orange. Oh, aside from red? Roy well, G. you Div. can add red if you want to. Okay, red, so orange, yellow. Red, orange, yellow, green. Uh, blue, indigo, and violet. Oh, girl. Mm. Ding, 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 ding. We had to learn that in science. And, and, uh, I know, but you forget shit. All right. You don't really forget Roy Final G. Biv. Question. Go ahead. Final question. You ready? Hmm? Name three redheaded comedians. Well, not counting the ones we we talked about? I mean, no, I can't name female. Fe female. I'm sorry. Female. Oh, yeah. Lucy, Three Lucy Ball, Carol female. Burnett. Lucy Ball, Carol Burnett. And uh, let's see. Who's the third? Kathleen Madigan. Okay. Why did you tell me? I was Kathleen Madigan. You happy? Because I didn't want you to disrespect Kathleen Madigan. 
I want there's probably more than three. I could have said, what was the name oh, of the I comedian? Know, that but I was just seeing if you could the, pull three out of your... Look at your arm again. You're I know. the wobble. <laughs> uh, no, I could I would have gotten the third one. You got any more? Are these softball questions? No, no. Bonus question. Just because I know you're studying Italian. Mm -hmm. What is the f word or the phrase for funny redhead in Italian? Uh, what the head is testa, testa rosa. Uh, funny. I I don't know. I forgot the word for funny, but a redhead. Does that have anything to do with humorous, humor, humoroso, or anything like that? Because that seems Maybe like humor a Latin. Testa rosa. Testa rosa. That's all in redhead. Uh, all right. Well, I don't you know. failed the last bonus question, but you got the other right. two. Yeah. So what do I get? Nothing. I get to come back next week. Yep. I get see to come what you back have next in store week. for next week. And if you can pass. But I, I, I thank you. Bravo. Brava. Brava. Very good. You, you're smart. Most people don't know you're that. Smart. Huh? You're a smart woman. Uh, I try. And this is why I felt confident in quizzing you because I wouldn't just throw these questions out to anybody because I'd make them feel lesser than that they didn't know the answers to. But you, I knew you would have the answers to it. So you're saying I was showing off? I didn't mean to be showing off. I just, no, I'm not, you, you know, I'm not ashamed you know, of my intelligence, though. That's what I'm saying. I would like to highlight that and show people your depth of knowledge but thank you but i'm tired of talking about you now and i think this right, is going to be the end of go. our show it's I time to go so. Let me but is i think it's a great show um Let's i don't want to see your kitty cat look at who's here Come which on. is funny because our cats look exactly alike they do except yours they has do. a fluffier tail um but that's anyway, true but they do so, look exactly alike they and, do. And yours which has, is, which yours is when has, we first has, met has each other was water. Mine yeah. No, mine doesn't have mine. that. My do, mine it has doesn't have testicles, but it has a penis. Yeah, he Go has check. that. But Go check and get back to I'm me. I'm not gonna. He still has claws. I'm not doing. I'm not going down that route. But all right. Well, we're gonna be well, here every week, right? We're gonna be here every week we until uh, we are. People tell us and, uh, get the hell away from me. Until the court orders come out. Until we get to restraining orders, we're going to be. Uh, we have a great force, guest next but, week. Uh, we have a fantastic who is it? guest. Who is it? I forget. I don't know if who I should it? tell you. I'm not even going to say it. Tell I'm going to surprise tell you. Us. No, don't tell me what to do. You're not the boss of me. All right. I love you, I Kathy Caldwell. I love, I love you. you, Julia Scotty. And Jim, we love you. We, Thank you for all you do you. for us. Thank you, Jim. We love you. Oh, this is too sappy. Uh, All right. he, he won't even come back on screen. He's scared. Well, I'm going to go All have right. my meatball sandwich. So, and uh, Yeah, me too. Now you got me wanting a meatball sandwich. So, All right, homemade. so we'll see you next next week. Thank you, guys. Uh, be well. Treat each other well. And keep yeah. laughing. We love you. All Talk right. to you later. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye. Bye.